Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with three packs of Eldritch Moon. I'm gonna open eeny, meeny, miny, mo, ah, whatever. I decided to get all Tamios before I found out uh, from Reddit, thank you, Reddit, that it is entirely possible that, at least here in the U.S., all of the, let me just make sure I say this correctly, non-flip mythics come in packs of only one art. So, I guess we'll find out whether, and that's per box, not, you know, every single time. But, so it changes based on the box. My hands are slick. This is not working so well. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, there we go. There we go. So we're going to start off opening this first pack. We start off with a Waxing Moon, which lets you transform a target werewolf, then your creatures gain trample until end of turn. Brazen Wolves, speaking of wolves, I guess. Very nice. Ooh, Drag Under. Alright, so it's an unsummon that draws us a card. Very nice. Blood Briar. Whenever you sacrifice another permanent plus one plus one counter. Interesting. Borrowed Malevolence. Okay. Lunark Mantle. That art. Wow. So Dark Souls. Exultant Cultist. Borrowed Hostility. So two Escalate spells in here. Also, that looks like one of the Doctors in the art. That's got to be Matt Smith. <laughs> oh, okay. Or I'm just crazy. The Raven's Standard Bearer. I, this saw a lot more play in Limited than I thought it would, to be honest. Abandon Reason. Gnarlwood Dryad. Hey there. I've been looking for you. I'm going to end up using you in one of my deck decks coming up, so... Very nice. This is Modern's uh, Nimble Mongoose. It's the closest thing we're going to get. It's a 1-1 one, one that gets bigger when there are more cards in the graveyard, but instead of Shroud, we get Death Touch. So this is nice and fine. Dies to Bolt, though. <laughs> Incendiary Flow. If you're thinking of doing Burn in Standard, this is where it's at. So let's see. You may have seen. I didn't catch what it was. So first let's do color. It looks gray? What is that? It's a creature. It's a 5-6. Okay, so 5-6 creatures. Elder Deep Fiend. Okay, well I may be able to play this in Animar EDH. I'm actually not sure. I do want to try that out. Well, tapping four permanents may not be all that relevant. Graph Rats which is the meld, uh, the Chittering Host top meld, that art. Good God. <laughs> I love how we keep the, uh, the same background, the same setting, rather, for it. There's the Avacyn altar, the Avacyn's collar altar, not altar, uh, tombstone. And then there it is again. So very nice. And then a human wizard... Ooh, human with, I can't remember who, from whom I saw this, but it was basically they were, they were showing that the, the legacy that Delver of Secrets takes, the path it takes, is somewhat similar to a uh, certain, Yu well, a number of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. There's uh, Gaga Jigo, Gaga Gigo, however that thing's name is said. There's, uh, not Marauding Captain, although it's up there. The Warrior Digreffer, I think it's called. Let's say Gaga Jiga. That, that fits most readily. Okay. So we're starting off with a Spring Sage Ritual. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Gain four life. Okay. Tattered Haunter. Eh. Dawn Griff. Hippogriffs, for some reason. I love how we get a Hippogriff and an Eldrazi Hippogriff, by the way, in this set. Maybe that's just me, but I think it's somewhat interesting. 
That was Wretched Griff, right? Wretched Griff is the Eldrazi Hippogriff. So, Wolfkin Bond. Skirzdag Supplicant. Flipping some cards around over back here. That's what you're... Ooh, sorry about that. That's what you're hearing. Terrarian. So, at... Sort it adds this mana. Well, it filters mana and then draws a card. Good for limited. Bold Impaler. Guardian of Pilgrims. Campaign of Vengeance. This may actually be my favorite art in terms of how epic it looks from the set. Soren and his vampires. Can't quite tell if that one's Olivia or not. All right. Murder. <laughs> okay. Alright, so... Actually, let's see. That's... Oh, so we've still another to go. Foul Emissary. This reminds me, if you've played Demon Souls, the, uh... The Fat Jesters, the Fat... Oh, whatever they're called. The fat Officials, that's it. The Fat Officials, that's this guy. Alright. So, once again, oh, it's blue... You're going to be a 5-4? No? Okay. It's not a creature. Its mana cost is... 5 blue blue. So, 5 blue blue... Well, I actually just saw its mind's dilation. I was trying to guess what it was, and then mine starts showing up. Okay, that's fair enough. Um... Hmm. I think I want to use, or try to use this as a win condition in a blue turbo fog deck. I try to build one blue turbo fog deck every... Wait a minute. This is a mythic. This is a non-flip mythic. Okay, so it's the Tamiyo packs in this box, then, that have the non-flip mythics. Okay, I, ca I can live with that. <laughs> yeah, so, for mono blue turbo fog... By the way, I'll, I'll say this while I'm opening the next pack. Uh, Curious Homunculus. Speaking of mono blue fog, I guess. Um... Just add one colorless mana for instance and sorceries, or transforms to make all of mine cheaper. So if I'm going to have any creatures in this list, it would be the homunculus. My foil is another matte tenant on this borrowed hostility. And then there's a devil. Well, okay. That art. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, so to what I was saying, um, I, I try to run a mono blue turbo fog deck every standard, uh, before there's a rotation, and the win conditions for it, I think, I've got a rise from the tides, there's part the water veil, which I think is the main win condition, I could try that, talent of the telepath, just a number of ways to go about doing it. You'll see that coming up before too long. We're going to start off this pack with a Cultist Staff. Olivia's Dragoon. So, Madness Enabler. Desperate Sentry. Okay. Thraben Foulbloods. Ew. Primal Druid. Limited. Very nice. Goes and gets you a land. Contingency plan. No real card advantage, but in a format where you want stuff in your graveyard, this is fine. I wish that it lets you... Well, you can't discard them, so no madness. Thermo Alchemist. You have the best name of any card in the set. Sounds like a metal band? Or maybe just an album. Probably just an album. Fiend Binder. That's okay. Cathar's Shield. Repel the Abominable. Prevent all damage that would be dealt by non-human sources. Lashweed Lurker. Another, this probably could go in the Animar EDH deck. Uh, maybe. Return a non-land permanent to the top of their library. I, that's not usually what the deck is trying to do, though. 
Spreading flames, six damage divided as I choose among any number of target creatures. Okay, so we're going to do this bit again. It's red. It's not a creature. All right, I'm going to try to not reveal it this time. Okay, what's the mana cost? One red red. Okay. It's red, it's not a creature, and its mana cost is one red red. Alright, I'll do it a little more. It's a rare. Oh, I give up. Collective Defiance. Okay, fair enough. Another nice little burn deck card. So, uh, burn could very well be a thing in this standard. I'm hoping it is, and my friend TJ assures me that it is with Eldritch Moon. Now, Ulvenwald Captive. Okay, so I guess this could go in the in Popper Defender ramp. This just gives you another win condition. It's a defender, it makes mana for you, and then it transforms into this ungodly abomination. <laughs> Alright. And then a spirit token at the end. Okay, so in each of these packs, I guess we'll start with this one, because I just picked it. What would be my first pick? If this were the first pack, what would be my first pick? Oh, the Primal Druid. It's easy for me to say that. Or the Captive. Because, well, in this case it gets me any of my colors. And if I don't know what color I'm getting yet, I'm that guy. I, I tend to try to keep open for as long as I can until I start seeing signals. Um, and often that does mean that I end up going green. Because green is the color that's most accommodating to other colors. Other than that, I don't know about this because of red red in the cost. Um, that does force me into red when it may not actually be open. Um, and this is <laughs> eight, eight mana. I can do it, I'm sure, or eight mana or less, but I don't know. Maybe that's it. So it's probably going to be one of these three in this pack. And... Devoid of any other context. Um, yeah, I think we go with the Primal Druid. I think that's where I, I hit. It, it ramps me a little bit. It fixes my colors. It gives me a chump blocker. Uh, I think I'll go with the Primal Druid for that pack. Uh, for the... Oh, dear. Did I get these mixed up a little bit? It looks like I did. Oh, so the Mind's Dilation ran over here. Ah, here we go. Oh yeah, this is right. So, the blue-blue doesn't matter quite as much in Mind's Dilation because it's that expensive. This is probably easy. If we're... That probably has to be my first pick because it's so good. It just wins you the game outright. And I'm okay with going into blue because of draw power. Uh, I prefer to go into green because it's so accommodating. But blue has enough draw power that it can play with other colors pretty reasonably as well. Nothing seems to rise to that level just yet. I mean, Terrarian fixes my colors and draws me a card, but this isn't first pick worthy. I, I want my bombs before I want my fixing. So yeah, Mind's Dilation wins for this pack. And then for the first one, let's see. Ooh, these are so good. Alright, so this is kind of serving the role of Primal Druid in this pack. Keeps me open, draws me a card, but that's not really where I want to be, right? I don't think so. Um, I unsummon, even if it draws me a card, isn't worth being first pickable. No way. Um, Bar of Malevolence doesn't kill enough for it to be a first pick. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a great pack from what I'm seeing. I could just go with the Bomb of Elder Deep Feigned. Uh, I really don't like its ability in Limited, though. It does open up the potential for killing with a swing from that turn. The Gnarlwood Dryad stalls and actually does something later on in the game. Uh, just the fact that it's a Death Touch 1-drop could be enough to make me pick that first. But the Cultist lets me keep all of my colors open, 
well, not all of them, that would be the Elder Deep Fame, but plays most easily with other colors here. It can die and draw a card for me. I, like I said, blue can do that. Blue can play with other colors. I hope I'm making myself clear. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Or I could just go with the bomb of Elder Deep Feigned. This is likely enough to come back around because it isn't all that strong. Maybe I just go with the 8 mana or less and hope that gets me there. I think that's fine. Elder Deep Feigned can just win me the late game just by opening them up for an alpha strike. So, yeah, I'll take this. I, I feel like it shouldn't be that hard, like it, I should have just picked this. There's that cautious side of me that wants me to keep every color open just in case, and that's why I perhaps lean a little bit too far uh, in this direction. And then while this plays to the late game, this plays to the early game, which is why I was debating both of these. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this... Uh, <laughs> this little journey into the mind of T1 Glistener Elf. I will see you later. Bye-bye.